Aloha, and welcome to Hear My Voice podcast planted in Kona Faith Center in Captain Cook, Hawaii. Our purpose is drawing families deeper to God. Hey, we're your hosts, Emmerich, and your guest host, Robin. Good evening. And we are here with Lexi. She's here with us to discuss the sermon talents. You can find the original sermon on YouTube under the Pulpit Team videos at Kona Faith Center's channel. Thank you for joining us. And Lexi, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you're involved at Kona Faith Center? Yeah, so I've been at Kona Faith Center for quite some time and about 15 years, actually. I just recently added up the years. So I came in at Children's Church and was taught all the lessons and really felt at home in that community. And that kept me on, you know, all of these years and even into my adult years and brought my husband in as well. So that's how I got involved with Kona Faith Center. What I do at Kona Faith Center is I volunteer on the education team. I work with Auntie Robin pretty closely and also starting with the Children's Church this year as well as with our new school, Corbin Academy, which is coming fall of 24. Other teams I participate on are the pulpit team, the altar prayer team, and the tech team to help with this podcast. Lots of fun. That's awesome. You're very um, busy here at Corner Fate Center. I love the people. Keeps me going. So Emmerich was saying that you had a message on talents. Yes. And so can you give us a two-minute summary of the message? Yeah, so God has given all of us talents, God-given talents and gifts. He desires that we use them for his kingdom. For me personally, I had to be really encouraged in growing and developing these talents and what they look like, what the Bible, how the Bible expresses to use them versus how you know, we can see other talents used in the world. Some people sing really well, some people dance really well, but we're all really individual. We all have a purpose. So realizing the talents that we have, developing them, and then also applying them into life. And then how do we develop those things? How do we develop discipline and make sure that we are being good stewards of those gifts and talents? Got it. I liked how you um you put together your fitness and God's word together and it meshed together and that's just how your life is. Yeah, it took a long time to figure out how to align those two, but taking the time to seek God and ask him, you know, where he wanted me to go, how to use my talents, it's really rewarding to be able to do my passions and also share God in the process. Like I said, my business slash ministry. <laughs> <laughs> right. So while um you're preparing this message, what is something God spoke to you? So many things. He speaks to me primarily through like themes in my life. And so I'll notice something repetitive or something that stands out to me, whether it's Like in the Bible, it always lines up in the Bible, but also maybe I admire about somebody else or noticing about things that I see in my day-to-day life, they tend to line up. And so for the last two and a half years, I've been really working on building my business and that all comes around the talent, right? So God gave me a talent of fitness and health. And wanting to help other people be healthy, be fit for the tasks that they want to do in life, whether that's being an athlete, reaching high levels or recreational athletes, or even just regular people trying to be healthy in their own bodies, in their own ways. I've had such a variety of experiences with health and fitness being so fun. And God was showing me He uses those disciplines and training in all sorts of ways, like so life transferable skills. So taking what I was applying in my fitness and also 
in my spiritual development, reading the Bible, and how do we combine those to live God's way? And that's really where this message, I guess, was birthed and came together. And it's been sort of my life journey, like I said, for the last couple of years, growing my business and trying to put together a plan where it's well balanced because our health is multidimensional. There's a lot of aspects to our health that are really important. And fitness is of some importance. The Bible says that. There's also important that we take care of our relationships, our spiritual well-being, acknowledging that there's something bigger than us out there. So we reference Yeshua, God, Jesus, that higher power. And then, but there's different components to health. And so God's really been showing me and encouraging me to encourage others to learn disciplines. And one way to do that is through their fitness. And so some people need help with their fitness, which is what I do for a living. And so I personal train and I teach and I try to also relate the physical disciplines to other areas of life, right? Like we don't want just to be super fit and neglect the other aspects of health, um, but really drawing and relating them to biblical principles. And so that I can share that at all times in my life. I think that's the the question that I had was you mentioned the translating or being able to take a skill from one area of physical training into a spiritual discipline and you're kind of you're kind of talking about I was just wondering if you can get a little bit more specific on how one translates to the other right so the first thing that comes to mind is is reading the bible right like that is a discipline to be able to dedicate that time and the number one uh barrier to fitness and people working out is time. So time blocking is one time management. So you have to have time management in order to schedule in your exercise, whether that's 30 minutes, whether that's an hour, some people work out a lot longer, which is great. Um, But being able to time block that. So that's the first thing that comes to mind. And then also learning to apply those skills too. For fitness, you have to teach your mind and body to communicate, right? To be coordinated, you need to practice. And other things, it's the same thing. You're not going to be, I don't expect people to be perfect on their first rep or their first attempt at a new exercise or a new move, but we practice it, you know, maybe by the third or fourth set, they got it down and they're like, wow, I got it. And then they have that, you know, neurological connection, mind to body movement. Mm -hmm. Same thing with some of the spiritual things. Maybe you just got to practice praying for a few people. And then by the third or fourth time, you're like, okay, I feel pretty good about this. Then you feel more comfortable with that, that discipline or that skill. Yes. Okay. You mentioned something about calling as usually a combo of physical skills and abilities, as well as our spiritual gifts but they were dependent on the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so all of us have the gifts and talents. And for us, sometimes it's a lifelong journey of figuring out what those things are. Oftentimes, they relate to the things that we're passionate about. If all of us chased our dreams, life would look a little bit different, I'll say. People would be a lot happier, I think. So developing those gifts and talents, and then when we have that spiritual component then God creates these opportunities in our life where we get to share. When we're doing the things that we're good at, it attracts people's attention, right? And that's the Jesus in us. So people are attracted to the Jesus in us and want some of that, even if they're not quite sure how to identify that. But when we're walking in our gifts and our talents and we're using those things, it catches people's attention. And so when we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and he prompts us to maybe go a different way or stop at a store or different things. It happens to me often where I'll, you know, stop at the bank and then I'll run into somebody that I haven't seen in a really long time. And then I get an opportunity to connect with them. For me personally, it relates into my business, guides them into the talent that I have 
an access way that I can help them while also sharing the love of God with them. Oh, that's cool. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, good question. So Lexi, what does the application of this message look like in your life today related to local family dynamics in Hawaii? And how does this apply? So for me personally, it's keeping on when things get tough. You know, running a business is not always easy. And sometimes when it gets tough, I want to choose a different direction or push in another way. But following through in my roles and where God has called me, you know, not quitting when it gets tough. Everybody can relate to that, too, because life isn't always easy and we face things that are challenging and face opposition. Even even when we're good at something, it can still get hard when you have that inner conviction of knowing like God gave me this gift. God gave me this talent and he wants me to use it. He wants me to use it for his kingdom to be glorified, just walking it out on the days that are tough, knowing that God is there for you that he has a plan for you. Continuing on when it's tough, I think is a really big lesson, being obedient to the call. So I think that a lot of people get scared or chased off when they have this dream, but they don't quite know how to fulfill it or walk it out. In my experience, it's tough, but when you continue to take one step at a time, then the picture kind of comes together when you're walking in God's plan. Even when you're walking in God's plan, you can still face opposition. But when you walk through it and God's prompting you along and he's strengthening you and you're in your word daily and it's continual renewal of your mind, renewal of your energy and strength from the word of God and and various other ways that you connect with God, prayer and worship and all those great seven pillars that we practice at Kona Faith Center enhances and kind of levels you up so that you're able to face the challenges that will come. You know, overcoming challenges also should be celebrated. And so when you do have those victories, big or small, it's really important to pause and really appreciate those victories and testimonies, right? Big or small, getting excited about those things. I think those are some practical applications, wouldn't you say? Yes. It sounds fun. (laughs) Yeah. I like to keep fitness fun. Yes, fitness can be fun. I always say that. It's also part of your mindset too, yeah? Like if you're like, oh, I have to do this, then you'll probably drag your feet through it. But if it's like, oh, I get to do this, I get to move. Um, An injury actually really taught me that. I had an injury where I couldn't walk for a little while. And I was like, wow. I was like, I really took for granted being able to walk and run. Now that I can, I thank God pretty much daily that I am healthy and that I can run and that I can move my body because reality is not everybody can. You had a quote in there, um, be consistent. When motivation dies out, you can rely on your discipline. Where did that come from? Part of it came from a guy that I subscribe to. I think his thing is called Daily Discipline. I talk about motivation a lot with my clients. You know, it's not going to be there every day. You're going to have weeks that you're feeling off. You're going to have weeks that life comes up and and you're not going to get to the workout, but not to lose, you know, excitement around it or get too discouraged on it. But if you've built in that discipline of like, okay, I do, I work out three days a week. It becomes part of your routine. I I tell my clients, it takes about six months to build a habit. It takes about six months to really get into that groove of the lifestyle change. And then it kind of comes together and it's still work. It still takes work. But when you've done something for, you know, six months, a year, whatever, and builds up to a decade, once you get to a decade, you're like, like, it's who I am, right? It becomes part of your identity. So when you lack that motivation, if you've built in those disciplines, then you're going to stay on track. Like one bad week isn't going to throw you off. And that's part of that life transferable skills as well. Well, all of that from your message on talents. Thank you so much for sharing all that you've learned from God and applied in your life and are continuously helping others to see where their talents are 
to see how they can see God move in their own lives. That's so cool. Thanks. And thanks for hopping in as host. That was fun. (laughs) Fun to be on the other side. Oh, boy. (laughs) (laughs) Mahalo for tuning in to Hear My Voice podcast today. We encourage you to spend a few minutes as a family to talk and reflect on how you can live Pono with these ideas. 